guys welcome back been a while since I posted a video been just trying to get through all the uh, bank stuff insurance all that stuff getting set up we're we're pretty much done with all that now uh, so in the meantime I had a guy come out and do the grade work to grade out for the house so he just finished that up today there it is it's it looks pretty good uh, back here on this back we actually had to cut the grade down quite a bit I mean you can see that bank there can't really tell much on the camera but that bank actually comes down right there in that low spot is probably about five feet from where the grade was before so we had to cut that down to where the back of the house is going to be right about in there and so that was about three feet at the back of the house so the reason we needed to do that we had to cut the back down to get the house lower in the ground because we have such a fall off here down towards the front of the house so we wouldn't have the front of the house towering in the air uh, which really wouldn't have been a big deal. We just had to put more front steps on the porch and you know all that stuff on the front porch, but the garage actually enters right here So that was the biggest reason we had to do this because where the garage enters We didn't want to have a huge ramp going up into the garage We wanted to make it look like it was more natural We had to cut it down back there get the house lower we're going to drop the garage floor two feet below the house floor and then uh, that'll give us some and we actually set the house back five more feet than what it was it's back up on the hill a little bit uh, those stakes right there those wooden stakes you see stuck in the ground that's the property line so that's where we were restricted we couldn't go any further back got it back as far as we could get it because that's the property line uh, so down here on the front the guy he piled all that dirt up right there we're going to use that to fill in around the front to where it's not such a steep front yard we're just going to taper it off gradually down down the hill down through here down towards that house and then uh, that way we don't have such a steep front yard and the house looks like it's more sitting on more of a level spot. Uh, we'll do that once we get the basement laid and, and the backfill done. Um, so right now, uh, basically what we're waiting on is we're waiting on the guy that done the, the grade work has got access to a very large excavator to dig this basement. When we were digging the the septic you see there there's a lot of shell and the little mini x that we used was about all it could handle to dig through that i mean it, it struggled it was slow go so he got the big excavator uh, this thing has a four foot bucket on it i mean this it's a, it's massive he said that that shell won't slow it down so we're waiting on it to get freed up. He is actually renting it from another company that is using it on a project right now in Salem, Virginia. So, uh, also, so we're, we're trying to save some money on transporting that thing because neither the guy that owns the excavator or the guy that's going to do the work for me, neither one of them own a truck big enough to haul it. So. They have to hire it out to have it hauled from Salem, Virginia to Royal Retreat, Virginia. So he was planning on, the guy that owns it was planning on bringing it back to Withfield where his business is located anyway. So once he brings it back, that, uh, since he was going to be transporting it that far anyway, that we would just split the cost on the transport and uh, they could just bring it on over here get started on this uh that's a pretty good fall off right here on this front um, 
going towards the front of the house. Uh, like I said, the back of the house is going to be right about there. That's about the that's where the back bump out is for the master bedroom, and it jogs in 16 foot, and then the back part of the main house is is right in here. And then so from that from that back corner over there to the front corner down here of the garage which bumps out off the front about 14 feet or so it's about 62 feet along that side it's like 62 feet 8 inches along that side so going that length you're going to get a good bit of fall I know the camera don't really do it justice but that's a, that's a fair amount of fall uh, before we cut the grade down we shot the laser on it and it was from the back corner of where the house is going to be to the front corner of where the house was going to be was about nine feet of fall so that we had to do something we didn't want to we didn't want to have a seven foot ramp going up into the garage so uh, we just looked goofy so we yeah we're gonna we're gonna just play it by ear I mean work a little bit at a time get done what we can I'm hoping that we can get that excavator over here in the next week or two uh, I think he had talked to him about two weeks ago and he said that best case he was going to be about three weeks out so on getting it so uh, maybe another week or two I'm trying to be optimistic about it so uh, we'll see we'll see what happens uh, uh, but other than that he piled my topsoil up that's all topsoil we had some really good topsoil on this on this spot where the house is it was actually it actually went down about 18 inches i mean it was a, it's some really good topsoil so we're blessed with that uh we're going to use that uh to do our final grade uh we got plenty there I believe to do that with and if we don't we can kind of strip some from somewhere else because the soil topsoil on this lot is so good we can actually strip it from somewhere else if need be to kind of help uh, cover up the, this nasty stuff <laughs> you can actually see those veins of shell mixed in with the clay there it's uh, you got to go down about 18 inches to get to this which you can kind of see the pattern there you can see you know the topsoil ends about there coming down the hill and then you know you start getting into more of the shell and then you're down into the, some of the clay and then it you know then it gets real rough uh, the dozer he was using is it's sitting down over the hill there it's it, it struggled a little bit uh, when it when you got down into this stuff that's it's pretty rough stuff to break up but hopefully that excavator is big enough that we don't have too much issue with it that it'll it'll chew right through it um that's that's the plan anyway i've already paid for this waiting on appalachian power to come or whoever that contract to get to do it come pull my wire through the tube <laughs> and uh, get her get her wire pulled get it hooked up and uh, we'll have juice up on the hill uh, our water is done right there's our spigot uh, we got water to that point uh, actually right now I've got it turned off down at the road before the meter I, I, I haven't called the town to have them turn it on just yet because we don't need it just yet no sense in paying a water bill that you don't need and uh, also potentially for a leak or anything I, I tested it after I hooked the spigot up and hooked it up down at the road I tested it and made sure that it wasn't going to leak uh, before I backfilled but you just never know I mean it's it, I don't trust a, a cramped fitting on a, on a PEX pipe but that's what I had to use uh, because that's what the town uses. Uh, now, whenever I go to run from this point, whenever I dig down right here and I cut that line to run my main water into the house, 
I'm going to transition to expansion packs, which is what I'm going to use in the house. Uh, I'm just a firm believer in that stuff. Uh, if you've not seen it, the uh, expansion packs actually uses a plastic ring, PEX ring, made out of the same material as the PEX pipe. Uh, it's a cross-length polyethylene, just like the regular PEX, but it actually is kind of formulated a little bit differently. So basically, your fittings are a little bit, the outside diameter of your fittings are a little bigger than the inside diameter of the PEX pipe. So without expanding that PEX pipe and that PEX ring out, you can't fit the fitting in the pipe. So you have to have an expander tool. So you expand that out and the PEX always wants to go back to its manufactured state. So you're, you're using the mechanical properties of the PEX pipe itself to create your seal and to create your your fitting so uh, it's a it's a in my mind uh, this is my opinion you can take it however you'd like I think that it's better because the PEX pipe is not always fighting against the PEX ring they're both working together to create a seal uh, as to where a regular PEX B or regular crimp style PEX is using that crimp ring to create the seal and the PEX pipe is always working back against that crimp ring. It's it, The PEX still wants to go back to its manufactured state so it's always pushing back against the crimp ring as the crimp ring's pushing back against the pipe to try to keep that seal. And I don't, I don't know how long it would take or if it even would but in my mind, I would think that eventually that ring's gonna lose that fight and that PEX pipe is gonna start leaking. It's gonna start leaking at that fitting. So that's why I'm not too big on the, the crimp style. Uh, we'll get into more of that whenever we go to start doing the plumbing on the house. I'll, uh, I'll try to get some video of, of me doing the actual plumbing because I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna do the electrical myself. Uh, I've got the block guy. He's standing ready waiting for me to call him to tell him when we're going to be laying block. We are right now, I told him to be somewhere around the end of January. We're middle December right now. We're at December 12th. So uh, we're, uh, I told him, you know, by the time we get, it's all pending on how long it takes to get the excavator over. Because once we get the excavator over, I'm going to, Know, we're going to get the basement dug we're going to get it leveled we're going to get everything right and then we're going to get down here we're going to put the form of drain in for our footers we're going to get our footers poured and then we'll be ready for him and i'm giving myself a month and a half to get to that point uh, so i've called him up let him know when i'll be ready uh, framers i've i've talked to a framer i believe i'm probably going to go with a uh, really nice guy uh, owns a company called Cripple Creek Builders out of Cripple Creek, Virginia. I believe I'm going to try to use him. He was going to be available around the 1st of March. Uh, right now he's building his own spec house and he's hoping to have it dried in by Christmas. So he's flying on it. So um, hoping to get him over around the 1st of March to start framing this deal up and get it dried in. And once we get it dried in, it'll be time to get in there and roll. Hopefully we'll be in better weather and be just something to, to keep us occupied for sure. Uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, we're getting a little progress done. It was exciting yesterday. I come out yesterday morning and he started this grade work. And I was ecstatic. It's, uh, it's just finally seems like it's something's happening. You know, it's, it's been, we've been sitting idle for so long, just prepping everything, getting everything ready bank-wise. Um, we're supposed to close, I think, on the construction loan Wednesday. This is on Saturday, so Wednesday or Friday, uh, depending on what the insurance company can, if they, how quick they can get my policy going. Uh, I had to get a builder's risk policy 
for the construction process. So I've uh, got to get that started. And hopefully I'll hear something on it Monday and we can get set to close on Wednesday and get some money to start this deal. Uh, right now, the, the guy that done the grade work, really nice guy, he owns a company called Neps Excavation. Uh, it's out of Crockett, Virginia. And he, uh, luckily he was, he was nice enough. And he understands the process of draws and stuff on a home project that um, he's willing to wait until I get my first draw before I pay him for the work that he's done here. So, uh, yeah, so we're getting ready to start rolling on it. Uh, when I start doing the form of drain, I'll do some videos on it. I've been watching a guy on YouTube, uh, Dirt Perfect. He's uh, He does a lot of the form of drain. He usually does ICF walls on top of it. Uh, we're actually going to put a block on it. Really no difference, uh, except for, uh, I, in my opinion, I think that you don't have to get the footers as smooth as what he does. He trowels them down pretty smooth. And uh, I'm sure that, I mean, they still need to be level. But, uh, you know, when you're putting a mortar bed and you're setting block on it, it's different than setting those ICFs on top of it. So, uh, yeah, Dirt Perfect, if you hear this video, uh, give me a shout out. Let me, give me any advice you can give me. I'll take it. Uh, be my first time using the form of drain. Pretty neat product. I'll go over it when we get started on it. So, uh, yeah, just... Keep checking back on it, and we'll see y'all in the next video.